You write that the argument over the accord is a quote, fight for America's soul. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, it, it is for two reasons. The first reason is that to get the Paris Agreement done and to have it implemented required Barack Obama essentially to sub subvert the, certainly the spirit of the United States Constitution. The Paris Agreement is a treaty which didn't go to the Senate, so it was constructed in a way so ostensibly it didn't need to go to the Senate. Similarly, the Clean Power Plan is uh, was constructed by the EPA. Uh, it didn't go. It, it didn't touch uh, either House of Congress. Whereas when they were dealing with acid rain, uh, the Clean Air Act amendments, they they were they passed uh, through both Houses of Congress. So something like acid rain was dealt with properly, you know, in a legislative way. Whereas with uh, carbon dioxide and global warming, which is a much economically a much much bigger deal. Congress, uh, uh, Congress was ignored. So that's, that's the first thing. But the, the second thing is to do with the way the climate industrial complex behaves and how they seek to win the argument. And that is to close down debate. It is to delegitimize dissent. It is to cow people into silence. And the penultimate um, chapter in the book is called The Spiral of Silence, which is this notion that when people don't hear arguments in the public square, they cease making those arguments themselves. They stop even knowing what they believe. And after a while, they don't even know what they believe. So you can just, you can suppress debate. You can suppress the arguments, not by having an argument, but just making sure you don't have an argument. And I think that is ultimately the United States Constitution depends on the First Amendment, the right to free speech. But that's a formality. The real thing is the essence of being able to to speak freely, and that is what is at risk. And I think there's a further dimension to it, in that the way I see this is that this is about trying to make America more like Europe. Europe is a continent of lassitude. It's a continent in decline. It's a continent where, where we believe energy needs to be rationed. It needs to be, we need to preserve things. America is about dynamism, it's about a better future. And that better future, there's nothing that shows that better future than the fracking revolution. It is the most extraordinary thing to have happened on the, in energy for decades, because we were told the oil was running out, we'd reached peak oil, there was, you know, production was going to diminish, diminish. This oil was always there, but until fracking, the horizontal fracturing came along, it couldn't be, it couldn't be commercial. And look what's happened, it is transformed. There is energy abundance. And America at its best is a country of abundance. And what the environmentalists are saying is, no, you can't have it. You have to leave it in the ground. You have to be poor. You have to, you have to, you, your tomorrows will be less rich than your today's. That, to me, is fundamentally anti-American. We've been discussing Rupert Darwal's newest book, Green Tyranny, exposing the totalitarian roots of the climate industrial complex. It's available today everywhere books are sold. Thank you.